Picture this, right? And this could be a movie. If someone's right, a movie writer, write this movie. Jeffrey Epstein gives me a billion dollars to bleach my butthole. I say yes. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Whatever, I'll take it. Just to bleach my butthole? Sure. Invites me to Epstein Island. I show up. I'm like, oh, nah, th there's some shit going down here. This is some human trafficking shit. Fuck is the this. butthole already bleached? Yeah, it's bleached already. Okay. Now I have a billion dollars. I go home. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm become Batman. Build my bat cave. Hire private military. Hire private hold military. On, hold on. We get a bunch. We get a bunch of Samoans, a bunch of Haitians. I got 50 grand each for you. You just come on on this on this mission to take out some pedophiles. Boom. He says yes. Now I got like, let's say I got 30 men with me. We hop in my PJ that I bought with my billion dollars. Go over Epstein's Island. Jump out with parachute. Boom. All of us coming down. AR 15s. Land. Start taking all these motherfuckers out. I put an end to Epstein's Island by myself. What's up, guys? We are here. Episode, uh, what is it? Episode 23? Yes, episode 23. We're with my 23. boy, David. Hello. Shout out, David. Uh, David's interesting. I wanted to bring David on because uh, David used to be very liberal. Oh, yeah. And you uh, are now more conservative. Oh, yeah. So I think that would be an interesting thing to talk about. It's weird because it's like a holiday episode and we're wearing... <laughs> right, we're very festive. We look so like security guards. Red, black, blue, white. We're and very... We're oh, my work. gosh. So yeah. It'd be weird to go political on this one. We'll make it Christmassy, but I do just want to get like your quick thoughts on, well, that, on like, uh, what made you switch, what made you change, I guess. Well, we can make it Christmassy when we go into like capitalism and giving things away and socialism and all that. But yeah, I used to be a super lib. Uh, and then like Bernie bro, I had a whole like anti-Trump flag in my room and everything. Mm. Okay. Um, and then I got vaxxed. <laughs> 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 I got, dude, I had the whole, like everything. Um, and then I started working for Valuetainment and Patrick Bet David. And then I found out there were Trump supporters and I was like annoyed at that. And I was like, oh, Fuck, dude, I don't want to work for this guy. He's going to spew a bunch of fucking Trump bullshit. And then I just started listening to what he had to say, and it just made sense. And also, at that time, like, the left started making less sense. Right, right. So I was like, again, I'm a very rational person. And so I was like, okay, well, I, I, the way he explained capitalism made sense to me. Like, capitalism is freedom. Yeah. And then socialism and communism is presented as freedom as like everyone is equal it's presented as equality yeah. equality and yeah. it's like well why wouldn't you want everyone to make it's cool well, because that's not fair like it's not fair for everyone to get like if i just got a slice of what you make a year why like for me doing oh, yeah. nothing well because to balance the skills why should they be balanced correct it should be a, me a meritocracy it wouldn't make any sense what for does it to not be so mean? also it's all, everything's based off of merit so essentially let's nice. just say if you were to be the hardest worker in the room you produce like for example in sales right when you look at sales that whoever produces the most gets paid the most if you're a shitty salesman well, you're getting fired. So, nice. you know, that's just the kind of situation. So I've always looked, because in sports, it's the ultimate meritocracy. Yeah. So you can only be, nepotism can only go so far to where you put somebody on. But if it's all based off of merit and your performance, meritocracy is the way to go. Yeah, it's, it's crazy that you say this too, because I'm not going to lie. I felt, I don't feel like I'm fucking right wing at all. You know, I made some money. So I like when it comes to finances that I do think that, but in general, I feel like I'm in the middle. I'm very liberal. I'm from California. So I'm very like, weed is okay, dude. Gay marriage, like, cool, bro. Um, but I just feel like the the point of the world that we're in now is just so like, yo, if you're not with us, you with them. Right, right. It's like Bloods and Crips. That's yeah. really what it is. Yeah. You know, it's funny that the colors are the same, but like, it's literally like, <laughs> right. it's on site now. It's like Bloods and Crips. You can't say one thing, otherwise they're on your motherfucking neck. Yeah, I think, I think it, it's the heightened victimhood because everything's turned into like the it's oppression not a real thing. Olympics, Victim right? Victimhood is not well, a real well, thing. We've had that conversation <laughs> oh. before. But it's like the oppression Olympics, pretty much. So oppression it's like, all right. Olympics. Yeah, because essentially it's like, all right, yeah. how can I make myself be more victimized than elsewhere? Perfect. We have three, and, we have three minorities right here. Op oppression Olympics. Wow. Let's go. Right. go. A Asian, uh, an Asian black an Asian. guy and Hispanic You're walk into a room. Yeah. Go but, ahead. Um, oppression Olympics. Go, Dave. With real, uh, slavery. Damn, he came out with a. I hit. win. He came out with a big one. Go ahead. Shit, immigration. Oh, oh well, oh, we've got that too. We've they got, got that too. They got him in uh, cages and fuck. shit. We've got yeah. that too. It's not, it's not as deep though. They got him in cages and shit, uh, bro. Well, 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 we were in cages on um, boats. On boats. Um, uh, yeah, but you had a job off the boat. Stop. Well, <laughs> if we made it, we Listen, had to make it. Got you. Stop Asian hate. What that mean? That they beat us up, bro. 
Who be, we beat you guys up. That just felt. Think, but, yeah, that did. whole stop Asian hate felt like a well. What about us? Right. Type of thing. Right. Nah, they beat us up, bro. Like you guys have nothing but positive stereotypes. Nah. Of course, they're little dicks, but still, you have yeah, nothing cap, but positive. Nah, I was saving that for. That's my home run hitter. It's okay. We'll save that. But listen. But you guys the, are smart. The stop Asian hate was like it was like because I know why it happened. As an Asian man, I could do this. Touch didn't touch my roots. They're like small and defenseless. Yeah. You go like in the, if there's a black woman walking on the street, you're not gonna like fucking beat her up. That bitch is gonna kill you. She will. Right? A Latina, she's gonna kill you. A little Asian woman, you beat her up, she'll be like, ah, Well, ah. you know from field research. <laughs> Shakase, Shakase. No, Whatever what they say know? when you go to sushi restaurants. Ah. <laughs> what, what have you experienced to where this has happened? You've walked down the no, mean but, streets of LA. Oh what, there's a Japanese lady laid out. There's a the, Cambodian over there. What's going that's on? That's why it was the whole thing, because Cause it's true though, and, and there's a stereotype. I mean, let's continue. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, what, what, what do you mean? Go, keep going with the stereotype. Limits, we gotta just go. We gotta push limits with stereotypes. Yeah. It's I mean, you guys are limits. smart, man. Did you, you guys, guys see no, that? No, but it's your turn. My turn for what? The oppression Olympics. Oh, we're, oppression Olympics. What else? What else issues we bar. have? Oh, oh, easy. Uh, 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 um, the uh, 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 crime. Crime. We're 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 prosecuted. We're prosecuted at, at a higher higher rate oh. per capita. Gotcha. Uh, 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 labor, underpaid labor for Mexicans. I'm not Mexican. Uh, yeah, though. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Isn't it interesting when you think it's bad immediately? Like Mexicans number one. Mexicans. Why, have, have, Theoretically, you could have said crime too. I'm just saying. Yeah, right, true. But I try to find things something else. Right, right. Fair. Should be like a yeah, Prussian bingo. Did you guys see that girl that got pulled over by a cop and then she was like, "But I'm non-binary." What? Yeah. You didn't I've see never that? Seen this. Dude, it just happened. Uh, well, by the time this episode airs, probably two weeks ago. But it was uh, this girl. She was driving on the opposite side of the road, so what? against traffic. And the guy's like, "Oh, have you been drinking?" She's like, oh, "I had like three drinks." And she's like, I, "Just as a as an indigenous woman or as a Native American woman." Yo, she was not. She was white as like pale as oh snow. Oh my god! And then um, and then she's like, I'm, she starts naming all these things. She's like, "I have social anxiety. I have depression. I am non-binary." And so when he was like trying to make her walk the line, he goes, ma'am, just put one foot. She's like, ah, I'm not ma'am. I use they, them pronouns. And he's like, all right, yeah, I'm sorry. Anyway, put your one foot in front of the right. other, walk a straight line. And she's like, I'm sorry, I have social anxiety. And he's, the cop's like, yeah, me too. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he's just like Good shooting Lord. shit down. She gets arrested. And as he's arresting her, she goes, stop, stop. You're being a white man. Yo. <laughs> Dang. He's checking damn near every nah. everyone. She had exists. a list. She's like, "What I'm can not I gonna say?" Lie though, that's bro. crazy. That like that's the that's the trump card to call someone a white man, bro. That's a that's a win. Automatic. I remember I was arguing in the comment it's section one day, yeah, like right, a win for her. No, a win for the whoever's doing it. I was arguing in the comment section one day with a random guy. I don't know. It was a random guy. I said something. Someone responded to me, or I stated my opinion, like I do on the internet. Someone responded to me, and they said something. And I thought about it, I was like, I could have a really intellectual response and like, or I could just, I looked at his profile, I was like, fucking white guy. Or I could just be like, man, that's something a white dude would say. And it's an automatic oh, win because I, I posted that comment right under it. Right, and it right. literally got like 97 likes, my comment. Mm. It was just like a, it's like a, what does that even mean? It doesn't mean anything because I had, he, he had like a, guy. he wrote like a, a thing and I was like, I could, I could have a good response for him. Or I could just call him white. Because right now, <laughs> the, the general, the general yeah. like, Population. Public enemy number one. It's public enemy number one. Right, right. Your public enemy you number know? one. Like it doesn't matter what the context may be. You're in a situation where you have to apologize for your existence. So no yeah. matter what, like you could be winning in an argument, whatever the case is. Once they drop that card, you're like, well, I guess I am a straight white male. It's and the, then at that point, it's over. Like I, uh, I, I have a bit of sympathy that exists there. I do too. But it's 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 at a point where I can't really say a bit because I'm very rational with how I navigate mm -hmm. through life. I don't feel like somebody should have that I have to pay the consequences for something that they didn't Facts. weren't involved in, but I agree. well, ju just in the just in the matter of the conversation of it, oppression Olympics. Yeah, you are a you know straight white male. Yeah, you that's had it the, coming bro, to you. That's yeah. the the racial equivalent of like still beat though. Right. You know, if a right. girl a girl could Essentially like, a girl could be like, you got a small dick, you fucking suck at sex, you're ugly, you can't get no hoes, blah 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 blah. Still beat though. Right. You win enough. automatically. It's like the equivalent. It could be like you did this, this, you're a criminal, you're this, you're this. Something a white dude would say. It's an automatic, like... I think, yeah, white people get this rep that they're lame, that they, right. like... It's just... It's so funny how much racism well, it's, they it's can endure. Like <laughs> right, right, right. And and it's it, what, what's so interesting about it, and I think especially as it pertains to what racism is supposed to be versus what it's considered now where everything yeah. is primarily verbal. Yeah. 
you can't look at how racism is being defined and say somebody doesn't qualify to have right. to be a victim it of racism. Just make because sense. at that point, if it's just, hey, I'm saying this just based off appearance alone, everybody would have to qualify. If you now introduce power dynamics which it should be yeah. based upon well then still you could have situations where somebody can be a victim of because it would be a case-by-case -case basis how would you define racism so i would look at it as um prejudice plus power that is ex and, exists there yeah so because essentially so, like like but some hatred in there right right like, of course it would have to be hatred in there hate. like let's just say if there were to be um you're, you're hiring per se right and you're a company predominantly you know white company whatever the mm -hmm. case is and we'll just use black and white because those are the go-to's yeah so then a black person comes in same qualifications as a white person same sort of you know experience whatever the case is you deny the black person not because they didn't have a good interview or whatever just simply off the case of them being black right mm -hmm. i would look at that and be like all right if that's the case then hey that's racism but if it's a matter of you know you look at the performance that was done in i guess in the past you look at the merit of how the recommendations whatever they may have gotten if the white person has better recommendations they have much better experience on paper they've produced better in whatever sort of you know uh, um the selection process may have been and they get selected i can't sit there and approve you crying racist so i think it, uh, it it's prejudice plus power and it also gets, it has to be a i think it gets super racism. tricky though right because I, and it's gonna sound fucked up, but I think you can almost use race to make uh, an like. And I'm not saying it's right, but mm -hmm. I'm saying that if you, a smart human being would use their surroundings to make a decision or an assumption, a smart decision. If I'm going on the basketball court, I see a bunch of white dudes, and I see one black dude, six three, black. Or, like an know, educated guess, a hypothesis. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Is it racist for me to be like, I'm gonna take the black dude? Let's say they're all the same height. Or let's say the black dude's an inch shorter. Would it be smarter of me to be like, I'm gonna take the black dude? No, so white that, that 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 would be based off of I don't stereotype essentially because Stere yeah. are stereotypes you, racist. No, I think it's just an extension of I think stereotypes is based off of data. I think there of course you there's of yes. course you're in a situation oh, where yeah. what about the watermelon stereotype with black people? Oh, is it that one? Is but that, who doesn't like chicken and watermelon? Right? Who That's doesn't? Just, who doesn't? I think it's just a probably uh, in, in the cartoons this is, of the well, this the, is, the, the 80s, so this what, my, 80s no, this is, 30s, this is, and this is where a little. Weird, right? KFC's owned by a white guy. Right. You go to right. KFC here in Miami, who do you see in there? Bunch like of black people working? Bunch yeah. of black Mexicans? people. Right. Bunch but of black that, people. That, okay, well, I would say that is also attributed to just the type of labor it is. Right. Because you no, go- not working there, eating there. You go, oh, you go, you Are go, you, well, what, it is, no, but I don't think it's marketed predominantly towards, because I think Popeye's in, it, that's it, like that, they, more product, um, predominantly marketed towards also them. Also, Checkers right. is the black jo jo uh, burger joint. Oh, is it? Oh, food. I didn't know that. I, I've only had Checkers Popeye's one too. time in my life. Yeah, but, but Popeye's so, primarily, yeah. So that's my thing. And Hennessy, same thing. Yeah, Hennessy. Yeah, I think Hennessy got Bro, the black community in a choke I literally, over. And Hennessey I see there. it, I'm kind of like, this is so, <laughs> it's so fucked, but it's like, there's, if there wasn't truth to it, this wouldn't be how the world worked. Because right. we, I was watching an NBA game, right? It was an NBA game, and literally ads, Popeyes, yep, Hennessy. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. Oh, uh, right? Hennessy, yeah. the official, the official uh, beverage of the NBA. It was <laughs> something like that. Yeah, was something. Like, they have, they have a weird like. They, I think. I, oh my God, I wish I knew the official drink what of the NBA that they have now because I've been seeing more Hennessy commercial because I had never seen Hennessy commercials yeah. in the past. Out of nowhere, the past maybe 18 months, I've been seeing Hennessy commercials pop up during, like, I, I don't even watch television like that. I primarily, if I'm turning on the TV, I'm watching sports. Right. But if I'm watching basketball or I'm watching football, all of a sudden, but primarily during basketball games, Hennessy commercials out of nowhere, I'm like, ah. And because, you know, I'm on social media or I'm in, like, the, the marketing space now, and I'm looking, I'm like, ah, I, I kind of know what y'all doing here. And this is what's the craziest part. Hennessy, Hennessy Moet. Uh, it's owned by Bernard Arnold, the Arnold family, the second richest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. He owns uh, Hennessy's and under his umbrella of brands. They know what the fuck they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. So for them to market in the NBA, is it stereotypical to say, oh, black people like Hennessy? Oh, you black people like Hennessy? It, it's like, I understand what like, oh, it's racist. But at the same time, if it wasn't true, why the fuck are they sponsoring the NBA? And why are they super successful? Yeah. Why is the guy that owns <laughs> Hennessy the second richest guy in the world if he, if he wasn't good at... You know, the that. other thing, though, is the NBA is also incredibly woke. It's so yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, woke. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. And one woke thing now. I've noticed, uh, my girlfriend and I have been watching the show, and the thing is, like, they'll show ads, and, oh, no, I'm sorry, what am I talking about? I saw this watching a, a Dolphins game, all the ads, any major corporation, Verizon, anything like that, all the ads start with a person of color. 
Back in the day, I remember growing up, all the ads were white people. No, nah, but I know why they do it with the person of color. As an advertiser, I can tell you why. Well, what is you it? You want somebody I, to identify. You want to identify. But that's the thing, though. It's like, what, are white people not watching it then? Yeah, and that's what's very interesting. So because, like, And I think that's happening across even with all like kind of television, whatever the case is. Because granted, I understand why you would want to have diversity. But where I have an issue with it is you have to look by percentages, right? Now, yeah. Grant, you want everybody to feel like they're represented. But let's be real here. Right. Like, still, it's a predominantly white country, right? Is there something that's wrong with that? I don't think so, right? I, I truly, I don't think so. I think as we continue to populate, whatever the case is, then the percentages may increase, may decrease, whatever the case may be. But you shouldn't feel as if you have to force it. Like, the amount of, well, let's say, interracial couples that you see in different commercials or whatever yeah. the case is. It's everywhere, It's bro. everywhere, which I'm not saying it's a problem, yeah. but it gets to a point where you're watching, like, all right, are we just not going to address the elephant yeah. in the room like yeah. every single commercial has to have every commercial has to have every de demographic of yeah, person exactly like, and one thing i notice is that the white guy or the white woman is always if they show a white person it's either in a relationship with a person of color mm -hmm. or they're the butt of the joke so they're the awkward white guy at the party or they're and that's the way i see it though when it comes to a lot of this stuff specifically marketing mm -hmm. material uh if it makes dollars it makes sense if right. I'm going to make, if I'm a business owner, I'm a smart business but owner. But see, right? I think it goes beyond that for this. I think this is ESG scores. Well, no, because think about it like this. Could Disney, be, could Disney be. Disney has been incorporating a lot of like LGBT stuff in their, in their movies and stuff. And they're losing money. Yeah, it hasn't been working. It they're hasn't been working. Money. South Park made a thing about it where yeah, it's like yeah, the, the streaming. Yeah, the yeah, Panda yeah. Thing. Right, the Pandaverse, right. Well, um, so they're pandering. It's not working because people aren't relating to it. Yeah. Just think about it. If you follow the money, if there's 70% white people, you put a white person in an ad, 70% of people will relate to it more. You'll make more money. Right. right. Disney's trying to do this thing and it's not working and they're losing money. I think at the end of the day, people could feel how they want to feel. The money will never lie. Because I think they went too far. But right? I took a fat ass L. The money right, will never lie. Right. Right. Because I think, I think ultimately what, what you try to do is to be inclusive, to try to get people to be able to resonate. But then what the problem is, you go overboard by saying, well, I'm gonna try to do this for everything. And at yeah. this point <laughs> now, with new sort of demographics being defined every day, at what point are you going to take complete step well, away from your target audience? Like for example, with um, what happened with Marvel. Yeah. After Endgame had concluded, and then they started, like I think the latest um, movie with uh, Captain Marvel that came out, and you have three female leads primarily. But if you look at the Marvel audience, the target audience isn't going to the theaters just because it's a female lead. You're going there because you love comics, you love stories. Yeah. When you now contort stories, you then start changing characters, which I'm not you know, indicting them on for d depending on what the situation may be. But when you make the entire movie simply about the gender of the characters the and it got nothing to do or the race yeah. and it got nothing to do with the actual plot line and you're just like look at the people who are the superheroes here shit starts to get a little weird yeah and then the target market that you're trying to market to don't actually care about this so you're trying to get butts in seats simply because i can identify with this character it's well, never gonna work that takes me to that point where it's like well why because they're not, they know this right i mean it's not right. like they're like oblivious to this it, I think it all leads to like, well, why are you making business decisions that are clearly not profitable and that you know your target audience? For right. instance, Bud Light. And it's like, well, if you know you're going to lose money on this because you know you are. They didn't know. They had to No, they know, had to have dude. known. They no, had so to it's know. like, well, is someone, thought, is someone in your pocket? Are you getting more money from like right. billionaire who's elites? You? Who's funding nah, you? Right. They, they, no, right. They wouldn't have sponsored UFC if that was the case. They wouldn't have dropped. No, but that's on a recoup sort of situation. So I think, the I think this is what happens. Done. I think this is what happens. Business owners or like these businesses, when they advertise, they think they're gonna get fucking championed by doing this. For, for Bud Light, they put uh, uh, the the. I don't want to say gender. They put the person yeah. on the... Oh, um, um, Dylan Mulvaney. They put yeah, the person, yeah. Mulvaney. They put the person on the can, right? right. Um, they thought that the public was going to turn around. It's like, Bud Light is so brave. Look at what they're doing. They thought they would just, yeah, get the gay yeah, people. Right, sure. right, Shout right. out to Bud Light. But here's the thing. Gay people don't drink Bud Light. And they have it's a fruity <laughs> seltzer already. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, it's like... It's like gay people don't oh. drink Bud Light. They're, they're not like, but they have another product that gay people would drink. Right. I, I don't right. know. They, I but think like, they had the seltzer. No, like, but, why don't you do that? But then, because 
then they're gonna get heat for it. It's like, oh, why are you gonna put the fucking gay guy? Because that's what right, right, right. And that's by the way. But then that's but by the way that kind of emboldens your point. That kind of emboldens your point because it's like you strategically went and said, I'll choose this product in particular. Yeah. Like you must have known ahead of time. Now granted, you probably didn't, they probably didn't anticipate the drop off that they had right. being so substantial, but there's no way they didn't think this can cause, you know, a particular kind of uproar. I think it's pressure you know? from a different, I think, I when, think you, so when you become well. such a big entity like Disney, mm -hmm. Bud Light, or what's the, what's the parent company of Bud Light? Is it um, Anheuser-Busch? If I it's that, I mean, they have other people saying, trying to push a global agenda. I went from nah, but if it liberal made... to like, there is 100% George Soros influencing <laughs> like, all of these he's, things. He's like, he's deep. He's yeah, deep. He's deep. Uh, dude, it's, it's like, I it's so evident. Element. Listen, don't mag us up on podcast, bro. We I think there's a, an very, element of truth in that, though. We have a very mid, that, middle of the ground podcast. You're maga magaing it up right well, now, dude, bro. Dude, wait till you see the Swansica tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but no, dude, it's just so evident. It's so evident that like I so they're I, pushing this crazy agenda that stops the family, stops you reproducing, yeah. convinces you you're gay, bisexual, transgender, and come on, I mean birth control. The reason the reason birth I don't think that control, yeah, I've always had an issue with that. I've always name, had an issue with that. Birth control, and then we're finding out now that it women that take birth control are attracted to more feminine men. So here, check this out. You take this birth control, it stops you from having a baby, right. but let's say one slips through the cracks. What's it going to be with a weak feminine man? And what comes from a weak feminine dude? A weak feminine boy. We got Dave yep. Tate, David yep. Tate on the podcast right yeah. now. Yeah, hey, so hey, it's hey, like, God forbid one slips through, you're going to have it with a weak dude. Yeah, so I'm, it's, I'm not even threatened. He's spitting I, right I, now. That's true. I understand with this global agenda stuff. The reason I don't really go too deep into that is because at the end of the day, uh, if it doesn't make money, eventually it loses. If it's not productive, it loses eventually. Right, but if you're getting your money from George Soros just splashing it on you to push this agenda, right, right, then you're fine. It's like, oh, but they're losing money. Yeah, I think, yeah. It's yeah. just off the books in right, a Cayman Island right. somewhere else. Because whoever whoever is funding has enough money to cover, you know, whatever the losses may be. Because yeah, that's exactly, but you also I, have I like, also agree with that. I think there's an like element the, of truth to You have the reverse well. of that, though, because you have like an Elon Musk who buys Twitter Right. Well, so, those are people that are like, like Dana White. It's like a fight fuck back. you. You can't right. buy me, motherfucker. Right. That's a fuck you kind of money situation to where you can't be corrupted. Yeah. By by that. Elon. But, they asked them. They're like, why? Um, I think they asked something about like being censored. And he goes, if it, I don't care what it costs. You're not gonna silence me. Listen, right. uh, George Soros. If you're watching this, George Soros, Dana White, Elon Musk. If any of you guys are watching this, I have 800,000 followers that I could <laughs> uh, give a message to to the highest bidder. He has another 800,000 YouTube subscribers. So. This podcast, if you guys want to, 720, yeah, if you want to, whoever whoever wants to drop the most money, listen. Well, that's, Listen, yeah. I'm not bleaching my butthole for no money. I'm telling you that right <laughs> oh, now. Oh, that's that not guy happening. A billion, yeah, it's not a billion dollars. You wouldn't bleach your butthole for a billion dollars. Bi no, I'm not doing that. No, no cannot. No, not you're not doing billion? all the bleach mine right, right now for a million. Tell you the truth. No, because I bleach mine for a million. Tell you the truth. A billion dollars, bro. I wouldn't do it because it's not worth selling your soul. It's not worth selling your soul. Selling your soul. Bleaching your asshole, selling your soul. No, because the moment that you take the money, they have the leverage. Because I would love to be in a situation where it's like, all right, you take the money, you do the yeah, but if it's bleach, nah, they have the Interesting point. It's it's, your butthole, it's fucking. It sounds good in theory, but then you get screwed on the, the back end. It's like, okay, what? You're gonna, gonna tell people one. that I bleached my butthole no, for a billion dollars? No, because because here's the thing. <laughs> if I, I'll tell them. No, because if I was to take the deal, of course I'd be in front of it, like, hey man, yeah. I did this. But the problem is, it's like, and but. I think it was um Patrice O'Neill or JFK had the oh JFK Patrice O'Neill or Bill Burr <laughs> had the joke where it's like, all right, it was either Kevin right, Hart or George Bush. Right. Like you take you take the you take the deal. You're like, all right, this is great. They wheel you into a room and then they show, oh man, so it is the person who killed JFK. So these are your family members, right? Yeah. So you're gonna tell anybody about this? So they have the ultimate leverage that's over you. I'm not saying that's what happens because ultimately we don't know, allegedly. But um, the way that I see it is you would take the deal and you're like, oh, this is great. I got all this money. But on the back end, Dude, they have your soul. <clears throat> that's, that's Epstein Island right there. All this shit, they're like, hey, Renee, you're this up and coming, you know, media mogul, all that stuff. Dude, you got to come to this party. Oh, sure. Dude, all the fucking elites are going to be there. You have to be there. It'll really like beat up. Sure, you go to the you pull up. It's on this private island. You pull up. By the way, this is 
yeah, interesting, interesting. Okay, cool. We got you um, on the list yeah. now, motherfucker. No, you just on, made the list. I'm like, oh, the, the, you see all these fucking pedophile, all these kids. You're like, yep. oh, you're on the list for this pedophile so, island. Yep. So are you not gonna do mm -hmm. that thing? This is like where yep. I don't know. Yep. I feel like when you have a when <laughs> yep. you have a billion though, now you can start fucking with stuff. Like if no. I had a if I had a billion dollars, I have, I hire a private army. We're dropping it in like the SEAL work. Team Six, bro. You already know this. Money's not real. So with that being the case, although in theory they may have given you this billion, but if they're able to give you this billion, how much money do they really have? Fair, but it's no. But like, imagine if it's the Rothschilds so who like, come okay, in so or the Vanderbilts. Let's you're, say you're like, fucked. Picture this, right? And this could be a movie. If someone's right, a movie writer, write this movie. Picture this: Jeffrey Epstein gives me a billion dollars to bleach my butthole. All right, I say yes. I'm like, all right, fuck it, whatever. I'll take it just to bleach my butthole. Sure, sure. Invites me to Epstein Island. I show up. I'm like, oh nah, th there's some shit going down here. There's some human trafficking shit. Is fuck the this. butthole already bleached? Yeah, it's bleached already. Okay. Oh, I'm shit. like, nah. I'm and you not. took the money. I took the money. I'm like, Jeez. nah. All right. I took the money already, but I see it. I'm like, nah, fuck that. So now I have a billion dollars. I go home. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm become Batman. Build my bat cave. Hire a private military. Hire a private hold military. On, hold on. We get a bunch. We get a bunch of Samoans, a bunch of Haitians, a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of these dudes. Hey, yo, listen. Hey yo, I go up to you, Dave. You're you're Haitian. You probably know some Haitian people. I got I got fifty. I got, that I do. I got I got fifty grand each for you, right? Fifty grand each for you. You just come on on this on this mission to take out some pedophiles, right? Boom. He says yes. Now I got like let's say I got thirty men with me. We hop in my PJ that I bought with my billion dollars. Go over Epstein's island. Jump out with parachutes. Boom. All of us coming down. AR 15s Land. Start taking all these motherfuckers out. Right. I put an end to Epstein's Island by myself. It sounds good <laughs> in theory, right? Now, well, here's the caveat, though. right? Here's the caveat. Fast 10 been out for a minute, so if you didn't see it, I'm going to spoil it for you. Okay. Right? And the movie Hold was on, trash. let me watch the first right. eight. The movie nine. was trash. So, <laughs> yeah. basically, there was a moment inside where um, I believe her name was Cypher. Okay. Whatever the case was. And um, Jason Momoa's character had came in, and apparently he had his money was a bit longer than hers. Yeah. He ended up showing everybody photos of their family members and said, hey, kill her, and your family doesn't get hurt. And what did they do? Turn the gun on her. They started working for him reluctantly, right, in order to protect their families. And if anything happened to him, their families are finished, right? Right. The same thing can happen in this scenario. You have this billion dollars, right? Where's the billion dollars stored? Remember what happened with Kanye? It's a different situation where yeah. if JP Morgan, oh, well, there goes your money, right? So if let's just say you have a billion in cash. That's great. Where are you going to hide a billion dollars to where they can't touch it? Then furthermore, you get Let's say you recruit me, you recruit my Haitian fellows, you recruit the Samoans, the Samoans. Tongans, yeah, all of the all other of people. Them. Maybe not get any, you know, any, any of the Asians, because apparently, according to you, they're not very good. We get one. You have the ninjas or whatever, but they can't dodge bullets. So one yeah. way or another, you record it. You you get you recruit everybody to be a part of this, you know, uh, um, coalition. This 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 this, this militia per se to go yep. and take out these pedophiles, yep. right? We all pull up to the island, and yep. upon arrival, here's a loading screen that is up on the board with all of our families up there. Hey, so you guys came over here to eliminate us. You take us out. We're taking out your loved ones, so you have nobody to go back home to. What percentage of people do you think will still go forward with it? There will be a large percentage who immediately, in order to protect their families, won't take action, and they'll go back home with their tail between their legs because their money <laughs> – goes longer than yours. Oh, that's why twist. you can't I already take killed the my family. No, I'm kidding. Right, and that'd be a best game. Like, I'm Chris Benoit. At that point, yeah. you know, you could pretty much do what you want. Fair. But it, it's a situation where the moment that you take the deal, it's over. It's like with, in music where a bunch of these people are signing like, well, what is it, the, uh, the 360 deals or whatever the case is. Yeah. And you now are, um, you're working for said overseeing label or whatever the case is but they have complete leverage that's over you because yeah. I, since we were young they always said would you do this for this amount of money and I'm like, man I, I take the money are you kidding me that's life-changing money the problem is on the back end on the front end you get the money but this person you're indebted to that person forever yeah because think about it somebody hands you a billion dollars you think there's not something else that's on the other also, end of it and realistically they, they never give you them or you enough to overpower right them. they exactly. keep you enough to keep you at bay they give you enough right. to keep you at bay and and just you know keep you happy and all that stuff yeah. but then never enough to overpower me 
Dude, Soros is a weird entity. Like, mm-hmm. he is so scary. He's attached to a lot of different things. Like, expect, if, if we didn't want to go into it, like, even with what happened with Black Lives Matter. Soros. I went to my first, I, w- I was out there in the protest in 2020. Not because I'm like, man, I'm so fed up. I got to get out in the streets and take to the streets. By the way, sorry, I was so liberal, I almost bought a Black Lives Matter shirt. Oh, Lord, yeah, you might want to, yeah, I would say resell it. And that was only three years ago. Oh, so never. you post a black, yeah. post a black screen always, on your Instagram? Yeah. Oh, my black God. Oh, I black screen on your Instagram? Oh, I did oh, black yeah. You were in there. You were in there. Because I, I support the saying and the theory. I don't support the organization. I said it even back same. then in 2020. Because same. here's what bothered me the most. And I already knew this from when I was in college. Because what ended up doing the shift for me was what happened with um, Alton Sterling with that particular shooting where everybody. What it was, was that uh, um, So essentially it was out in, um, I forget the day. Was it Ohio? Oh, I forget. I forget where it was, but apparently there was like a firearm in which he had had um, in his pocket. No, I think he had reached for it and they had like um, testimonials or like video or whatever the case was. And everybody kind of went with one story. And then when the facts had came out, it was the other. And nobody came out and said, ah, shit, we fucked up. Right now, granted, shouldn't have been condemned death, which um, God, we wish it was on, on top of my mind. So I could really go into detail about it. But I had remembered when it had transpired, I felt a very, very slighted about it because I was leaning with the populace about what had happened happen and then once all of the other information that came out nobody acknowledged the other end so when 2020 came around and i have never been a big proponent of marches because i think the only thing march does is get you to april and the biggest issue that i have is in the past it worked because you could affect money. Like with the Montgomery bus boycott, when these, when when King, everybody else, they weren't taking the bus, everybody who was out there wasn't taking the bus, it affected dollars. Now, when the pandemic was going on, you're not affecting dollars or whatever the case is, and now we're all congregated in one area. We're talking about issues. What are the solutions? We're just talking. We're all congregated, we all talking, right? And the biggest problem that I had with it is you're collecting all of this money, what are you doing with it? Then to find out three years later, because I already looked at it like, yo, man, you, you, people are getting scammed. Right. I've seen this, I've seen this happen before. And then to have everything play out to where these three ladies scammed everybody and you just went, you took this money, you was buying houses for your family, whatever the case may be, and still, they're not answering for it. It's still right. in a situation where it's like, all right, you have public, you know, court of opinion where they're like, oh, these people are assholes. But who's really going pulling up on them? Like, yo, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Right. Because you, you see people get beat up and killed for less. You step on somebody's sneaker or whatever. Now, let's just say the entire community, you took millions upon millions from the community trying to do what was considered right for people. And you end up. Do, being in business for yourself right. nobody pulling up to your front door that's crazy to me right. so um i say all that to say when it comes to like with the soros or whoever is going to be backing certain things i always look at it like okay let me take a step back and before i even have either opinion on it or whatever i just want to review the entire scale of the situation so i can actually have an informed opinion about something versus just being moved primarily about emotion because the populace is saying we're feeling this way about it. yeah that's exactly how i operated i operated pure on just emotion i was like yeah what the fuck these people are getting slot and it's like okay so how, like how would like let's say a regular person is like that right how would they flip that switch because it seems like you when i talk to you now i never would have guessed when you said this i was like shook mm-hmm. I was like, no yeah. way. How like how do people flip that switch? Because I've talked to some people and I've tried to explain very nicely. I'm like, hey, little, this is kind of like how money works, how the world works. Right. And certain ideologies, right? There's a bunch of ideologies of like that people could talk about when it comes to like gay marriage or race relations or abortion, right? Where it's like that's an opinion. Right. That's someone's thoughts, mm-hmm. right? But with something like money, it's super concrete and it's a it's a a, a fact. Um. And I explain to people like, yo, you should financially, you should think this way, right? Fuck everything else. Financially, what I do know a lot about, what I can uh, educate you about, you should think like this. People still think about it. And they're like, nah, I don't think so. I think people should just share the money. I'm like. Because they don't have the money to go and share. Because it, it's like whenever people say money doesn't like money doesn't buy happiness or whatever. And then we're like, no, if I had money, I'd be happy all the time. Until you have money and you realize, yo, I still got the same fucking problems. You have to experience it for yourself. Because granted, I do agree to a certain, because it's case by case. There's moments in which you could say, hey, you should do this with your money. You should do that. But it depends on what somebody's actual outlook on life, or I should say what their end goal looks right. like for them. So it can change up financially. Right. 
that case. However, there is many different points in which they'll say, oh, man, I think everybody should share the money. But you're not somebody who's grinding every single day easy to go to and say. earn it. And it's easy for you to yeah. say because it, it's all benefit for you and no risk. If right. you're somebody who has, you know, you make 400 grand or whatever, and then now you have to share it amongst the group. And let's just say you have to split. Like, yo, what the fuck? This is some bullshit right yeah. here. Because you can say it's for the betterment of the group. Right. But soon enough, I'm not going to say it's selfishness that comes in, but you got to you got to call a spade a spade. You're kind of, you, you're just you're taking the easy route. You're not doing anything. You yeah. know? Yeah, I think for some people cuz you can even if you're not making the money, you can still see it cuz I I wasn't making the money. I was a production coordinator. Like I was right. making what like 40 grand a year like um but it's just about being that person has to be open minded and they have to be able to hear the other side. Right. Um, that was what I was willing to do also because I work there. So I was like, I had no choice, but I was willing to hear it and it made sense. And the other thing is um, there's someone said to me once it was like my conservative friends were patient with me when I was a liberal, but my liberal friends are not patient with me now that I'm a conservative. Right. They like so it's all about. I guess it's just the the person like it's case by case. Some yeah. people will not like some people just view the world through a different lens. And mm -hmm. it's just like there has there's that balance of the world. There's people that think one way and people that think the other way. And it's because of that that we're somewhat balanced. Correct. And I think the last thing that I'll say, at least we're on going this before you share your thought was it has to be the willingness to have the discourse, because yeah. for me, I, I'm not I'm not left leaning, I'm not right leaning. Same like way. oftentimes it could come off as if I'm sounding like I'm yeah. on top, but I'm truly down the middle. Facts. I don't give a fuck about most things. Facts. Right. But I'm willing to have the conversation. If if somebody can turn my opinion on something, I'm completely open to that. But I'll listen to somebody, you know, tell me what it is that they think about something. I'll provide my retort or I'll provide my informed opinion of what I know about. If it's something that I have no clue about, I'm not going to sit over here passionately defend some shit that I don't give a fuck about. That's can, stupid. Can we do a rapid fire? Okay. Yeah, as far as what? Let's do as it. far as, uh, uh, I guess, uh, ooh, um, political beliefs that are controversial. Not controversial, but like usual things that people okay. think. Like abortion. Okay. Are you... <laughs> Easy. Right. <laughs> abortion, pro or, or against? Against. Against abortion. Well, it's kind of, it's you kind rapid of fire. Like rapid fire. Right. Yeah. Right. But 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 if I was to say pro or against, I would say against because I think you're yeah. more often than not, you know exactly what it is that you go, you, you're getting into. Same. And before I used to be like just yeah, I mean go for it. It is your body, your choice. Right. But no, now I'm against abortion. Right. I'm right. A, the baby. Pro unless it's for me. So the way I see it, it's like it's like if I'm dating a girl, she's not having an abortion. I'm I'm personally against abortion. I don't care what other people do. I'm liberal. I think I ultimately the it's way. the same thing. Like I, I, I feel I don't the same what you way. Do. Like because because I'm not aborting my baby. Morally, but a morally, baby, your baby, because kill your baby. Pe I don't care. People will use people will use the um the the uh what what was the word? They'll use the um the outlier, or I should say the yeah. um the smaller percentage of okay, if it's a victim of sexual assault, you have a situation like right. that, or it's a freak accident situation, you can't provide for yeah. the child, whatever the case is. If it's a matter of sexual assault and you have to abort the child, I completely understand the support. I have no issue with that. But he's the most conservative if, one now. Right, he's right. the one that's like. No, because like, if, <laughs> yeah. if you like, were engaging in unprotected sex and you knew this is a product, because yeah. what's the purpose of sex? To procreate. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's not just a recreational act. Now, it's become recreational because people are Facts. doing it. But if you know this is a product of you engaging in unprotected sex, you busting nuts up inside women, you're so not protecting abortion, yourself, whatever my the baby, case is. I don't care. You got do whatever you want, I, though. But see, that's no, I don't, I don't I like can't that. Do that. I don't like because that. Because person, because I've seen this even about uh, kids in public school. They're like, Worry about your own kid. You don't even have kids. What do you right. care what they're teaching? Them? Right. Because then it becomes a societal thing. Yep. So it's like, I care about my kid, but I don't care what you do with your kid. Mm -hmm. Then that sort of freedom that people get becomes not a but, thing that so, my kids will then so, have right, to deal because with. it becomes a live, let but, live sort of nah, situation. But then here's, so here's the thing, though. When so I, comes, I do care what other people do because right. then it'll affect my kids so, and my grandkids. And okay. Stuff. Right. But put right. to the same extent, right? The world right? that they live in. If, if you say, hey... You shouldn't be allowed to have an abortion. Um, you should. You should also be. You should. They should also be able to say, "Hey, you shouldn't care what they teach in schools." 
they're gonna teach you this in school because you know like we say hey stay away from, like so uh, uh there's a big controversial one but there was a uh, like like they're saying that they're teaching like gay stuff oh in yeah, schools, yeah, 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 yeah yeah right yeah, yeah uh i say hey fuck it teach your kids that stay away from my kids in the same way that, hey, if you want to abort your kid, go ahead, stay away from my kid. Nah, I don't like that because those kids are going to be my kid's boss. They're going to be lawmakers. They're going to be politicians. They're going to be cops. And I don't know what sort of propaganda is being fed to them at that age. And I don't want to live in that world. And you shouldn't be teaching kids that. It's none of your business. You shouldn't. Kids don't need to know that. And also. I agree 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so I do care what other people are teaching their kids and what they're teaching in public schools, even though I don't have a kid. Because so, that is the future. So, that, but that's what right. I'm saying. Like, how, like, who makes you the king of the world to dictate what other people do with their kids? Well, I'm not. It's not like I'm going over here with like a gun and telling no, everyone. No, no. Like, I you, think, you I believe think what okay. you do within your house that can be completely different. So, but if it's in, a, like, if you're going to public school, that's now it's, so, it's okay, so spread then, so, out so, amongst. Yeah, the I'm better, I have for a better that. analogy. Right, so that's where I think I the populace analogy. should dictate. Vaccine then. If you believe yeah. that people shouldn't be able to have abortions, then you can't say, "Oh, my body, my choice." You can't say my body, my choice when it comes to the vaccine. Why do you have freedom when it comes to the vaccine, but you don't have freedom when it comes to abortions? Well, well that's, okay, back in 2020. You can't have it both ways. No, 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 hold on, hold on, I don't, I agree with you. The, the, hang on, hang on, hang on. 2020, David, would have been like, well, because other people will, you know, you'll get other people sick, you should get vaccinated for public health. But that's bullshit. Again, you should have the option, but the government didn't give you the option. They were like, you have to get this to work, to do this, to right. fly, right. to do other... And that's bullshit. So, that, but I look at abortion the same way. If the government doesn't give you an option to have an abortion, you should have the option to have an abortion. You should. If you want. You should. I agree. And the same with the vaccine. You should have the option to take the vaccine. That's why the I think the vaccine is a matter of what yeah, your thoughts are. If they it. force the vaccine on you, it's the same thing as forcing an abortion or no, have, not having an abortion. They should let you do whatever you want. I think you should have the choice to do so. That's right? the issue I, think I have you should with have the choice to do so. Yeah. However, if you were to ask me what my thoughts were morally, I'm not saying cancel it completely, but if what I think about it morally, I'd say no more but i, I understand know. why i don't know if you exist. should have the choice to do so because yeah. it's different so why, you, so why no, you, i think i think you should have but the you choice be, to do so, so that's, that's I, the I think thing you that have the i dislike so. and this problem applies to both liberal or conservative mm -hmm. people and this is why i feel like i'm right in the middle because if you're conservative it's like my uh it's like no you can't have abortion you can't force uh like you can force women have a baby right but you can't force me to do it with my body when it comes to a shot and then on the liberal side it's like Oh, my body, my choice. Okay, if that's the case, why are you forcing people to take a right? Because it's not. It's not I, I'm that. There. It's not I'm that. There with you. It's I'm not there with you. that clear right. cut. My body, my choice. Mm -hmm. Right. Because in theory, it, it should be that clear cut, but it doesn't seem as if that's the case. I I understand where you're <laughs> coming from these, as well. These little slogans, yeah, yeah. like "my body, my choice," is so interesting because. So what does that mean? Just because it's your body, it's your choice to do whatever you want. That's, so, okay, yeah. so if it's my body, my choice, do I have the freedom to just swing it this way and just hit whoever's in front of me because it's my body, my choice? No, but, but it's, it would be the same thing as, like, the, the vaccine then. Oh, you, uh, oh, just because your body, if you don't take the vaccine, you're going to spread it to other people. You're going to spread COVID to other people. So it's like one of those things where if it's, it, it is your body, your choice, you should be able to do what you want. Anyway, so we, we have our, our stances on, on the vaccine, forcing the vaccine, abortion. What's the other topics? Um. Uh. 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 What's another? Uh, yeah, because this, gun, is, this gun is gun control. Oh, I. I'm. I'm pro. I'm pro gun. Pro gun. I, I think pro we're all pro gun. Yeah. Uh, and listen, I, and the, I, the only I'm thing that controls York. my gun is this right here, baby. <laughs> right. And I'm from New York, so it, it's it's brutal. Because the only reason why I say it is is because um my biggest argument I've always had against oh well let's add more restriction, which I understand nobody should really be able to just get AR-15 left and right if you want, right? At whatever particular age. But the biggest issue I have when they say all right, let's just take away people's guns is criminals break the law that's what makes Facts. you a criminal right, so yeah. if you're in a situation where you now take the guns out of the hands of the actual law-abiding citizens the good gun owners yeah, where there's the fucked. vast majority drugs are illegal more, people stop right? drugs exactly hey, that's exactly my murder point. is illegal right murder is illegal <laughs> Rape's illegal. All of these things are illegal. There's people who break the law. We call them criminals. Fact. You take all of the deterrence that exists in the world away from the people who actually do it the right way. Now the only people who have their hands on them are, the, are the criminals. Guys. Because guess what? If you're somebody who follows the law, the moment that the law were to pass, all of this is illegal. If you don't want to be considered a criminal, you'll give your stuff back, right? Now, of course, we have the 
right. general population was like, no, fuck that. I'm not giving it back, which I completely understand. But if you now take it out of the hands of the actual good gun um, owners, yeah. now all of the criminals will say, oh, great. I yep. know you don't have this like, anymore. We can go run amok. What's the criminal going to think? Like, oh, I really want to shoot up this school, but guns are illegal. Right. <laughs> right. It didn't make like, I, and I always thought about like open carry about? states like Texas or stuff like that. If a criminal, and there's always been the go-to uh, um, argument I've always used, even since high school, I've always used the same one. Let's just say you're in Texas. You walk into a saloon, right? And a this is somebody who is a, a criminal. You you walk in there with a gun. <laughs> the hell's a and saloon? your goal is to go in. It's like an old school bar. But you go into this saloon and or a bar or a restaurant, whatever, and your entire goal is to rob the place and leave. It's different if your goal was to go in there, kill people, and then get you know go out in a blaze of glory or, or nefarious intent, if you will. But if you go in there like, all right, this is an open carry state. Everybody has a gun. You go in there with the thought process of, all right, I may be able to get, you know, take some people out, but somebody's going to get me. Yeah, there's a, definitely a, versus, at least one guy right, with a gun. Versus going into a particular kind of state where you know nobody's armed. Yeah. Right. You have the complete leverage. I would rather have a situation where if everybody is armed or everybody has the option to be armed, you as a you criminal, see it, you don't know. The equivalent of this with countries would be like a nuclear stalemate. Exactly. Exactly. That's Mo, what like, deterrence is for. You, like, there's no, no one, there's like no world wars anymore because everyone's like, like that fucking. Exactly. It's the Spider-Man meme. It's yeah. like, all right, oh, you want to fire a nuke? It's Great. Like, we have technology to where we know you fired a nuke, so gonna everybody's going to fucking yeah, die. So it's like, what, like, you going to do this right now? That's you always know? been my take on it. And the wise That's words of Meek Mill, he said, you fuck around, you fuck around, you fuck around, get smoked. Yep. <laughs> Next <laughs> topic, David. Yep. Uh, 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 I don't know. I don't have another one. Is there another one? Im immigration. <laughs> immigration. Oh, Ooh, you saw the, the, the president of Poland. They, uh, he has a ban on Muslim travel really? into the country. Oh, good Lord. And they interviewed him and they're like, what up? You know, what do you, and he's like, I don't give a shit what you call me or what you call Poland. You can call us racists. You can call us xenophobes. You can call us whatever the hell you want. I was voted in to stop Muslim uh immigration and that is what this uh government will do but how do you how do you because here's what the muslim, problem is yeah, right islam muslim, is like a religious muslim domination isn't a race it's <laughs> well, a that's religion the issue is that and i have a buddy from the uk that says like dude the uk right now is like all muslim essentially and a lot of western the western western a lot of europe it's is gotta so be like, like anti-arab because well, it doesn't make sense because how would you you wouldn't know i'm muslim I guess unless the hijab, i tell you the hijab. or if i'm dressed in you know traditional muslim garb yeah you wouldn't know unless i tell you or i show it in how i naturally i think it's uh, a, i think I think it's inevitable life i think it's inevitable i think because muslims are, are more convicted with their beliefs than a lot of other religions i, th I would say i would argue that the most most muslim devout devout muslim populations are growing christian populations are shrinking right yeah and that's um, what, i mean that's the issue for so, europe essentially, so is that, yeah like because of that well, you're gonna you're gonna have that but it's just it's checks cold. and balances because yeah, what's gonna well, happen is well his argument's like well look at us we're incredibly safe. We haven't had a terrorist attack. We haven't had any sort of stabbings. We're so safe. Because it's, it, but then that's where that's where it kind of blurs Honestly, the line. Because respect. it's like those are those are correct. Because you, if, if you look at the numbers or whatever, if you're in a situation where all right, you don't have any particular kind of attack like that. You don't have anything like that. You say all right, well, it must be attributed to Muslims. If you have the statistics that back it up, okay, does that make it right? Me personally, I still think no. Yeah. Because. There are extremists in every single religion, facts, facts, every facts, single facts. race, whatever the case is. Now, if you're in a situation where you say, all right, you're just banning this. The problem that I have is with the religion, you would have to know that I'm a Muslim in order to go and ban me. Because right. upon arrival, you don't know what my religion is. So I can pull up white, black, Latino, Asian, Indian, anything. You don't know until I tell you. Is there a spreadsheet that you have me fill out? Say, wow. oh, well, what is your Robin. race? Sorry, there was uh, something he said. He goes, for me, multiculturalism is not a value. Well, no. So, <laughs> so, so, it's, so, so essentially, it's all right. So Poland is that, that's, saying. That's just the headline. Right, right, just headline. So, so, so they're saying, are they primarily Christian? Uh, I, I suppose well, so. Here's, so here's it's like why Romania, I... where it's primarily a Christian. So if that's the case, they're, they're, they're trying to become a 
down a, a Christian country, just where it's primarily hate. Is okay, and is that world. is that a morally ethically wrong? I don't think so. I don't think so. Is, but the thing I is, think if, if, if I think if, it's ethically but wrong, but where do you draw? Okay. Where do you I'm draw gonna, the line, right? Because if if you're saying, all right, this is what we want our country to be, we just want Christians. Cool. If you put a ban on Muslims, are you are you banning? Judaism? Are you banning? No, uh, just um, Muslims. You, see, that's where I have a problem. Why? That's where so, I have a problem. So here, Wait, but, no, but why? Because it, it seems like th th it's rooted in something else. Because it, it, if if you have issue with multiculturalism, and, and what or if he's just like, yeah, we just so don't, there's, there's, it's it's I just think, because I think it's specifically it's, Muslims. I think it's a little, it, it it's a little blurred from somewhere. Here's a great example: a primarily Muslim country, <laughs> right? Let's say you go to Iran. They don't let girls go to school because of their their religious beliefs. Is that okay? Uh. Uh, they don't let girls. Well, I guess like, like, it, it violates a human right. Of what is, like, what is well, human right? Well, no, 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 no. It, 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 it depends. Can on they what not you're go to school, from. or they cannot like they can't educate themselves at all? Yeah. It depends. Because it's a human what, right what, of like freedom of of education, not to receive education, but to be able to educate yourself. But no, so by but reading think, books, going to a public library, something like that. Um. So that so the reason I say this right is because. People could, if you say, oh, that's that's unethical, then it would be unethical to do it the opposite way. Why right. is it okay if Christians 100%. do it, but if, if Muslims do it based on their beliefs, they want they only want Muslim beliefs and they only want mm -hmm. uh, Christian beliefs. Right, and I have no why, issue with that. Why is it okay with right. when because, Christians do it, but not when Muslims do it? Because if it, you look at it from the outside looking in, it'll always look unethical. Right. Because if you're coming from a very westernized Facts. society Facts. and you look at what's going on in a different country, like for example, like how America says, oh, well, it looks like you need a little bit of democracy. Right, you could have a perfectly, you know, regular, organized country running perfectly fine, no issues. Like for example, in North Korea, not to say what they got going on is beautiful. It's not. Right. right? If you look from the Western perspective, yo, those people are in captivity. You're living a terrible fucking life. But for somebody who was born into it, you're now going through it or whatever the case is. If you're somebody who doesn't complain or you don't feel as if, man, you didn't see what life on the outside is like, it's not to say that you're not in subjugation. But who are we to now come in and say, oh well, that's morally wrong, whatever the case right. is, because that's how they're running their stuff. Stuff. Exactly. But where there's a cognitive dissonance that exists there is, although I can say, all right, we're on the outside, we have different cultures, we can live different lives, there's still a moral sort of thing where it's like where Martin Luther King had said, you know, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. So you're kind of looking at it like, ah, damn, but the those issue people is, aren't free. But, but then the, what's free? The issue is, yeah, you project yeah, your, you project, the, yeah, you project your view the of morality exactly. onto other countries. That's where the cognitive dissonance So you dissonance could look at exists. this and be like, right. oh, this is so not cool this is not okay but it's like you're speaking from your point of view exactly you know in the exactly. same way in the same way that other countries could look at us and right now there's there's like a uh like a super religious country right like a christian country or, or a like devout like uh islamic country they could look at us and see oh they have gay marriage they have mm -hmm. all these like hedonism. Five parades. yep hedonism they could be like that is not okay america is not okay for doing that mm -hmm. right i don't i don't see an issue with that i think everyone should have like like they should have their own thing but these other countries could look at us and say that. So morality, I think, it's a product of your environment, and your environment shapes the way. I think so so yeah. then, you're, are you in agreement with the Polish president, prime minister? I don't know. What he's I'm not in agreement, but I would, I would say this. I would say this. It's none of. I would say that's none of my business. In the same way, what they do in Iran is none of my business. In the same way that what they do in Russia, what they do in North Korea is none of my business. You know, it's like, that's your country. Yeah, until it comes to your front door. When it, yeah, <laughs> until and, it comes to your front door, that's my business. The second, the, right. when it comes to my front door, that's when it, Now it's my business. business. I agree. Here, I agree. Everything here in the United States, if they do something that's in the United States, that's my fair. business. I agree. I, live here. I, think, I think that's fair. Truly, what am I, I doing think that's fair. Getting involved in international affairs. Yeah, because like, everybody, everybody, everybody has a different opinion on a lot of different things, which, and I... That's why I appreciate this conversation so much because well, oftentimes people find themselves, like we talked about earlier, on the extreme of one side or the other. But right. when rationally you can look at something and say, hey, morally this is wrong, ethically it could be right. Well, hang on. Well, I just thought of something. What about <clears> – <throat> it does kind of – it should concern us a little bit because some of these things that happen globally in other countries can Has build effect. right, right, and then affect us later. Right. Like nah. how you would think like – if you're in Colombia and you look at uh, communism in Venezuela and you're like, well, I don't really care. Keep that in your country. Well, it's mm -hmm. like, well, it's going to seep through to our country. So we do should care what's going on there. Right. And no, then the same agree. reason why I care about the elections in Argentina. It's like, OK, great. A conservative president, because that becomes a global thing. Like who is in charge of certain countries is very important. Mm -hmm. No, but also what happens, though, is, is living in the United States. And I can only speak for people living in the United States. We are the dictator of what is cool. United States is the leader in world culture. At least we're 
supposed to be. And, yeah, yeah the well, world I can't say culture, supposed to, though. but have earned the right to do so. But now it's it's starting to get a little out of hand. So whatever, but the United States, if you look at it, all of our like Hollywood is just our big propaganda machine. Right. It the is. second we start, like, let's say let's say we go to war with a country. Right. The second we go to war with the country, fuck, we're gonna kill them on the propaganda side. We're gonna be dropping propaganda left and right. Imagine a movie with Brad Pitt, Leo DiCaprio, Tom Cruise about how the fucking about how Poland is bad. Bro, we would kill it. Like everyone that watches that, they're gonna be like, yo, Poland is bad. It in theory, it sounds good, but now, even internally amongst the country, and I think that's probably where the problem lies, because there's no unification of the American spirit. Right. So since yeah, that's the patriotism case, patriotism is at exactly, an all-time low. Patriotism is at an all-time low. So you ask, I can't say most, but you ask a percentage of, you know, whether it be teenage people, individuals in their 20s, people in their 30s now, oh, is America the greatest country? Do you love America? Whatever. There's been a shit ton of videos where they're like, man, fuck America. I think, that, I think that's only the case until we have to unify no right but then the problem is but the problem is when it's time for us to unify we're in a position now where you literally don't know if people will unify underneath yeah, the American it's like uh, if, if your no. family doesn't talk all year you expect them to Cause, no, cause exactly the, the, but the it's, way i look at it these people that hate america they're, they're little puppets they're people that are getting played by the media machine and i'd right. like to but think then the, the second that media machine starts spinning Everyone's back on. There's board. a possibility that things have possibly went too far. Uh, you think you think it's gone too a, far? I I think no. I don't it's think it's gone too far now, but it's definitely getting there to also, where people will be divided. But then I'm also on the boat of like I think they want us think to think we're more divided right than too. we actually are. Right. Every conversation I, I have, for the most part, even with like very liberal looking people, most people are like, yeah, I'm kind of over this whole like extreme LGBT. I think most shit. people are in the middle. Right. I think I think, I think, I think so second, too. I think, I think people are on the fence. That. People like we need a this sounds fucked. Mm. We need another 9-11 to unify us. Yeah, yeah. It's hilarious that you well, say that's that. what, that's happened. hilarious that you say happened. that. Were America. Because I, I said the same thing. Dude, when but I was the talking pandemic to my was family, supposed to be that thing that you. It was supposed us. to be, but it went the complete opposite way. And it sounds so fucked up, but, but why and would the that's, pandemic, again, that's where it's no, no, morally no, wrong. The pandemic wouldn't unify us though, because just knowing people, you have to create a a common enemy. Correct. Well, it should have been the Chinese virus. Al Qaeda. Yeah. Yeah. No, but but that's like, it's almost like you, you try to paint it a Chinese virus, but then it becomes like this racist thing. And China has their media machine also. Yeah. You know, well, it is a Chinese virus. But the funniest well, thing Donald that, Trump ever said was the kung flu. The kung <laughs> flu. <laughs> the kung flu. That's hilarious. Uh, but oh yeah, so God. literally, I think the media machine starts spinning. Most people are in the middle. You have that media machine push people. They'll they'll unify. We'll see. I, I, I'm, I don't think it's way too far gone. I'm kind of thinking more along the line of where you're at, where I think there could be a bit of deception that exists to where we think we're more divided than yeah. we actually are because more people are now living on the second screen. So most of your experience or world experience is not even really your experience. Yeah. It's based off somebody else's thought yeah. process. With So I'm right there with you. And I think, again, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance that I have so to where I'm here, in the middle on a lot of things. I, I see it right conflicting like opinions being in marketing i see how strong the media machine is right um i think about it like this right now from my computer from my laptop with very little money i don't know let's say i have a budget of ten thousand dollars a month i can show people whatever i want to show people six times a month right as much as i want and then eventually in, in this case i do it so they, they buy something whether they buy a product they buy some supplements they they sign up for a training but if you have that on a broad scale with billions of dollars behind it, that media machine just shoving it down people's throats mm -hmm. in the correct way, people switch naturally. Because people are like, I look at human beings almost like animals, like lab rats. Right. Most people are NPCs. We talked about most, right, people right. most people are NPCs. And we're going right. to say 70% of people are NPCs, then 70 people are controlled by that media machine. Right. So it's scary, but I also think that I'm very hopeful that like, I don't think it's as bad as people make it seem. I think a lot of it's fear mongering. I don't think there's a lot to fear because the second there's a common enemy, mm -hmm. we come together. But then th this is where the biggest caveat is. And this is the last thing I'm going to say on it. They're supposed to be what would be considered a common enemy. But then what's common as an enemy won't be a common enemy to everybody because somebody will view something <laughs> and say, oh, well, we should all unify behind this and be like, no, I kind of understand why this person. But if, if like even now, remember, I think, well, maybe not so much. I don't know if you guys happen to see it on TikTok. It was going viral where there was a ton of people who was looking at like, um, I think there was a. 
uh, Saddam, not Saddam Hussein, um, Osama bin Laden's like stuff came and they came out to, yeah, they came out to, no, not the niece, but they came out to um, defend Mm. like, oh man, you know, maybe Mm. 9-11 should have happened. I understand why they went and did it. I'm in support of, uh, of, uh, have you read his, uh, his letter or his speech? Yeah, I think it was, it was, it was probably that that was going viral and everybody now, now I'm not saying everybody, but there's a percentage of it was like, oh, I'm anti-America heavily or whatever. Right. I'm look, I'm very pro-America, but I, I read his, uh, one of his speeches about in 20, or 2021, a few years ago, I read it, <clears throat> uh, and it's actually very interesting. He goes, I'm not against freedom. Like, if, if they'll, the United States try to tell you I'm doing this because I hate your freedom, that's not true. If it's true, why aren't I attacking, like, the UK or right, you know, right. another uh, democracy? Um, the, thing, the reason why I attacked is because as a kid, I grew up watching the United States attack my town, my village here. Uh, and like I just saw them blow shit. up buildings constantly, right. innocent right. people dying. And nothing ever happened to the U.S. And so now, you know, I'm older and I think of all these things and I think like, what, am I just going to sit here and let this happen? No. I'm going to give you a taste of your own medicine. I'm going to knock down one of your tallest buildings. Sure. Because you can't just poke a bear and expect nothing to happen to you. Okay. And then he he got got smoked. So it's like. like, Well, yeah. His whole thing was like, I mean, I'm just going to do it. Done deal. Right. right. It wasn't like like a Hitler thing where he's like, oh, I'm going to take over the world. It was just like, um, I'm tired of getting bullied. Yeah, so, and so I was like, honestly, Osama bin Laden, the OG it, school like, shooter. He's the he's the dude original school shooter, pretty much. That's, um, and that's the thing. That's, and like, I can't necessarily. That's the blame thing. Her. That's the thing. That's where you have to look at it. Like morally, it's wrong. Ethically, I kind of get. It. And does that make you a bad <laughs> yeah, person? Because yeah. yeah, yeah. really, and 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 and. That's where the extremes exist because yeah. somebody will look at it and be like, oh, well, you must be. Because it, it, you have to look at stuff objectively. You have gotcha. to be able to. I have Mein Kampf. I've read Mein Kampf. And when I read through I it. I told you, bro. Right? What did I say I, about it? And I read Mein Kampf. <laughs> and I read it I read it three times. And while I was reading it, you, like, read it you read Mein Kampf three, three times. times? Three times. It's a good read. Hey, we I got read fucking, it. And I was like, bro. wow. This is. It? Kyrie Adonis over here. I was like, what is, wait a minute. Chisel, yeah. No, no, I wasn't in defense of anything of the name, yeah. but I just want to know, I just want to, because I looked at it from the you standpoint. You have to look at both perspectives. I have to look I at understand. both perspectives, right? And so I'm just reading the entire thing, and I read it three times, because I wanted, to, I wanted to, to be able to seep in and really be able to absorb right. what was being, you know, set up in there. And I'm just reading the entire thing. I'm like, okay. I can understand where his frustration, where you have it coming from, where he was in the book and he was talking about how every neighborhood that he would go to, every corner store, it's now occupied by people who aren't, you know, who don't look like the individuals of the country, whatever the case is, which I can understand. Did he take it too far? Absolutely. Did he you do think, too much? You think Hitler took it too far? Did he take, maybe, maybe, maybe he did. Maybe he did. You think Hitler took it too like, far? He took it, he took it <laughs> incredibly too far. And you can acknowledge that. But then the yeah. biggest problem that exists, and it's the same thing that happened with the with, with Osama's, you know, <laughs> test with the, the paper and everything. Line. It's like you don't look at the stuff objectively. It's like you get fed one side, and well, then that's it. And this again, is, this isn't in support. Now this is the way I look at it's it. It's just a conversation. Violence warrants violence, though. Right. So you're gonna start violence. It's gonna get violent with you. Don't be scared if someone gets violent back. Right. So I think I think if I'm in Osama's situation, that's what Osama say, was saying. Let's say I'm I'm in I'm in Hitler's situation. Yeah, and he and he got smoked. It mm. is what it is. You know, he took out a building. Now his entire country got smoked. He he did he got more people killed in his country by doing what he did. So he interesting. About that. That's so, a good way to look. So at yeah, it. so he could be like that, but it's like okay, you did that, and now what? Right. Now, now all of your people are dead. Right. Well, I think one, one can understand where right, he's coming can, from. It's and, fucking and America, baby. I think that's what it can nah, okay, so here's the thing. Right. Let's say you're going to be a school shooter, but oh, in Lord. reality, instead of just arresting you or killing you, I'm going to go to your house and shoot your family. Are you still going to be a school shooter? No. Exactly. So no, that, well, well it depends. Because if you're somebody who doesn't Probably. give a fuck about your family, then it's all right. But those would be an outlier. I think most of the so school shooters also, give but, a fuck about their family. So that's right. my point. So Osama right. bin Laden, exactly. like, he might have snapped exactly. and bombed us, but like, bro, you guys... That's where that's that's one of the reasons. The other day, you're no better than those you got exactly. Your bomb it's like, more. all right, this person goes low. I'll try to go lower, and then so, they'll keep going down. The, but you know, go, so back to Hitler. It's like all oh, these people that don't look like me. And I got tired of it. <laughs> mm. The second you introduce violence to the equation, all you're doing is you're getting violent. You're exactly. Getting more people 100%. Killed. I agree. It needs to. If if you were Hitler and you were supposed to do it correctly, you don't start persecu- persecuting Jews. What you do is you start empowering other people. To then open businesses in your neighborhood. That's how it should be. You should empower them. And be like, hey, look, listen. Like, yeah. if, like, great example. I agree. Asian people own all the businesses, so I can't even use Asian people. Let's say I'm, I'm black. I walk around. 
black neighborhood, it's all white people that own the businesses. I'm not gonna be there and be like, oh, let's rob these businesses owned by white people, because what happens? Now you get arrested, you perpetuate the stereotype. Instead, you, you educate black people and you're like, yo, listen, these well, white people are opening businesses and they're beating us because of this. So let's open businesses in our own neighborhood well, and let's drive them out because it's our black neighborhood. We know what we want. Let's go do that. And here's but the caveat the to issue, that because yeah. in um, 1921 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, they had what was called Black Wall Street, yeah. where it was the largest conglomerate of black millionaires um, and it got bombed by white folk, right? They did it again. A lot of people don't know that they did it again. They did it again in Durham, North Carolina. Got bombed again. They tried to redo it um, again in, I believe, 1925, 26. Did not end up working out. But that's in a situation to where there is racism behind it, to where it's not only right. um, prejudice, not only hatred, but also power, to where you can do this and get away with it. Right. Now, if you're in a situation where... Um, and this is where I agree with you. If you can now do this and there's not any powers that be that will try to prevent you from now empowering the community, then by all means, I'm right there with you. But if in the event there is a powers that be that prevents that from happening, like you can't get access to funding, you can't get access to information, you can't get access to you know uh, um, ownership of whether it be land, whether it be buildings, whatever the case is, if that exists, then you can't do that. Right. But if in the event that you can get access to that, then by all means, I'm right there with you. Yeah. But overall, this has been a very good conversation. And I hope that for the viewers, that it not necessarily expands your viewpoint on life or mm. politics or whatever the case is, but it opens up the door for dialogue because that's what it should be about. Even if we were to all disagree with each other, all agree with each other, the willingness to have the conversation and just talk about things. Talk. That is what matters here. Yep. Because if you're just somebody who's far extreme on the left, far extreme on the right, or just one of those incredibly defiant individuals in the middle, if you're not willing to hear the other person out and have discourse, what's even the purpose of trying to have a conversation if you're not even willing to have one? I am the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical individual, the chiseled Adonis. He is a serial entrepreneur, the Filipino prince tycoon, tycoon Rene Lacad. And this is our special guest, David. And we are, <laughs> this is David. <laughs> you, we are. This, this was is a sedulous. Yeah, that's true. Not gonna lie, I, I'm like a little starstruck. Mm -hmm.